Good morning, America. This is Blake coming back at you one more time. Anyway, um, you know how uh, we talk about this being Black History Month and uh, we talk about the normal heroes and the things that they accomplished and we feed them in successive generations to people and then we have the uh, those who come among us and celebrated symbolism over dinner and a speech and then people go back to their respective neighborhoods or class neighborhoods or what have you so i thought about someone who was literally written off out of black history his name is Robert F. Williams. This man, during the Freedom Rides of the MLK days, where they were constantly getting abused by the white Southerners. Abused means physically hurt. He decided that he had seen enough of this type of abuse and he decided to do something about it. So he came to the aid of these uh, freedom riders, him and a number of other people. And he basically said that we will no longer tolerate this type of abuse. And I'm paraphrasing. And so they fought back. Uh, there were, when he got there, when he became a famous name in the South, he was well known already throughout the South. And he wasn't concerned with MLK's uh, peaceful example of how to get things done because it had not worked. And they were attempting to show him that it could work and it turned into a disaster. So at some point, this man was charged on trumped up charges of kidnapping a white woman in, I think, Monroe, North Carolina, which is where he's from. He got a phone call saying that state troopers were coming to find and kill him. He did not take that lightly. So what did he do? He packed his bags, got his son's and his wife together. He carried one gun, she carried another. And they traveled through the back roads. Imagine that, through the back roads of Monroe, uh, North Carolina. And what surprised him and really caught him off guard is the FBI put him on his most wanted list. Most wanted fugitive. So what did he do? Left the country. Went to Cuba. Castro opened him up, opened up, opened up with open arms and let him in. And he started a radio program called Free Dixie. Now this is 1961 of 50,000 watts. And this Free Dixie was black political revolutionary music. Yes. And it reached the mainland. It reached uh, all across the South. And a lot of blacks were listening to this. Yeah. Imagine that. And he also had a talk radio program intertwined with this Free Dixie. Uh, a lot of the, all the artists were Southern blacks who experienced uh, white oppression. And so they sang about it. And the amazing thing is for so many years. Actually, he was in exile for eight years. For 
eight years, you left Cuba and went to China, where Mao Zedong and Chow and Lai embraced him, welcomed him. Wherever he went, the Chinese, him and his wife went, the Chinese people loved them. They were invited to all kind of uh, ceremonies where Mao Zedong would be. He was also invited. Imagine that. This is in the early. This is in the 1960s. But eventually, he wanted to come back home. But he was denied. He was denied several times, which is why he went from Cuba to uh, uh, China. When he returned, eventually in 1969. He got back here after eight years. Can you imagine eight years of being, not being allowed and then finally being allowed to come on back. And so the end result of all this were in that period, 1969, and he continued, continued to fight against the white supremacist system, the social construct, uh, police brutality. Now, within all of this is about guns, gun control. We see it on TV all the time, and it's a white issue, or is it? Just imagine if blacks were up in arms about guns like white people were. Just imagine if there was a united black front uh, in the form of Panther, Robert F. Williams, which is where they were influenced by this man. Where well, I'm not going to take this. I got guns and I know how to use them. And I will use them. So, with the evolution of the gun process, I can't call the man's name off the top of my head. But there was a man, uh, his name escapes me. He drafted, a, he, I think it was a Library of Congress he went to. Uh, I'm not sure. And he went and got a draft. It was the same draft law set up by Adolf Hitler 30 years prior. 1938, now we're talking. And highlighted in that draft was to keep guns from the undesirables. Everything about that draft of Hitler against these Europeans, Jews, was the same draft that this man from Connecticut, I can't, his name escapes me, politician from Connecticut, Ivy League, I believe, the same one he used as a draft and it was accepted and which made it even harder for blacks to have guns. It's nothing new because once blacks were freed from slavery, freed but not out of control, uh, the Saturday night special, well, they made it higher in taxes and higher in price. For blacks to own because most of them poor anyway, they couldn't own uh, a good gun or a high end gun. So gun control has always been about keeping them away from blacks. And I'm going back over 100 years, over 130 years. Uh, the evolution of gun control ha has always, always, always. Now, if you take the evolution of gun control and you look at it. Policing in urban or, or black areas, you can see the uh, the social neglect, or should I say, to walk into the community and find out what's going on here. There's a lot of noise, but if you're singing and dancing, they can make as much noise as you want. It's when you're thinking about doing something different, then there's an issue. Hence, Robert F. Williams. The Freedom Riders could ride and get beat on, kick, stomp, holes, bitten. Okay. 
Well, as soon as you picked up a gun and says, I ain't taking no more, now gun reform. Because from him, uh, rose up the deacons for defense. And a few years later, another black uh, name or title that was literally written out of black history, out of our psyche, as if mainstream media says, no, nah, we can't have you celebrating those kind of people. We'll tell you who to celebrate. You can celebrate the king that had a dream, not the king that wanted the poor people's march, not the king that spoke out against the United States government. He's meddling in our affairs. We need to silence him. Not that king, the other king. So the Deacon for Defense, another black organization, chapters all over, all over the country, carrying shotguns. Oh, yes. It got to the point where Robert F. Williams, his crew, or was a deacon for defense, I forget which ones, were taken in by King to protect them from these, what we call them, mobs. I just call them racist white people, because that's what it is. And to protect them from them. So back to Mr. Williams in particular, he continued to live out his life and speak out against uh, oppression and things like that. But the media, blackout. Yep. From the exile and the most wanted FBI, charges were dropped eventually because they were false Trump up charges. All the way up to the year that he died of... Uh, was it colon cancer or Hodgkin's disease? Yeah, he was about 75, I think. Yeah, somewhere around there. Or oh, 70, 71, yeah, somewhere around there, back in 1996. That is uh, when he breathed his last. So... Another not interesting tidbit, but another interesting major uh, denial about the black experience. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what that was. So um, look him up. Look up the price that he paid, the sacrifice that he made. Because he chose not to accept the abuse handed out by local, state, and government officials. No, I'm not doing it. And his very inspiring voice, very straightforward, called it like he saw it. He didn't want to be in charge of nobody. He didn't want to be seen as a leader. He was just a simple man who saw the truth. What's your excuse? By that, I mean, take a look at things for what they are and try to understand them as best you can and relate it to the lifestyle that you're living. So with that said, I just want to share that little bit and um, I look forward to hearing from you. Hopefully I will get some responses. It doesn't matter if you agree or not. You know, the dialogue part is what's most important. That's how we uh, grow. So with that, again, Robert F. Williams is his name. Word. I'm out.